Another week has passed, which means it's time for another weekly wrap-up. I'm here jumping right into it, talking about some football. The national championship game, college football national championship game, just took place between Georgia and TCU. Tough to even call it a game. Uh, Just from the jump, Georgia was the better team. The final score ended up being 65-7. to A really tough look for TCU. Just not good. Wasn't really an entertaining game. TCU had a great season coming up to this, an unexpectedly impressive season for them to get to the national championship game. But the story ends against Georgia, who is just a powerhouse team. This is their second national championship in a row. So tough for TCU to compete with that and kind of has the rumors swirling about whether Alabama should have been given a chance to play in the college football playoff because at least they could have given Georgia a run for their money. Moving into NFL, a ton of storylines from the last week of the NFL season. The first being DeMar Hamlin, the most important story of the NFL right now. He's okay. He's at least doing a lot better. He's been discharged from the Cincinnati hospital. Going home to Buffalo. Still a long way to go in the recovery process, but he's out. He's walking. Great to hear. And it's been great to see all the storylines about people donating to his charity and people wearing the number three and the sweatshirts and the love for DeMar. So... That was really awesome, and in the first game, the first play for the Buffalo Bills after that horrific injury, the Buffalo Bills take back the opening kickoff against the Patriots. You really couldn't ask for anything better than that. You couldn't script it better than that for the Bills to go out there and score that opening kickoff. Just incredible to see. And not only that, but they won the game, and by winning that game, they beat the Patriots and eliminate the Patriots from the playoffs, which I'm sure for Bills fans, it's always good to eliminate a division rival from the playoffs. So looking at that AFC playoff race, with the Pats losing, the Pats, they just had to win against the Bills, and they would have been into the playoffs, but they lost on Sunday, which means they needed a number of other teams to lose. That did not happen. The team that ended up getting that last wild card spot in the AFC playoffs is the Dolphins, who had a rough end of the season, but they won 11-6 to against the Jets on Sunday. Not the most entertaining game, but at the end of the day, a win is a win, and they're in the playoffs. So, you know, good for them. Uh, maybe two is going to be back for that. They're starting quarterback. They were able to win that game with a third stringer, which is honestly impressive. If two is back, then the Dolphins could really be a dangerous team to play in the playoffs. And then one of the last top four seeds remaining in the AFC playoffs was the AFC South. Who was going to win that division? That game was played on Saturday night. The Jaguars played the Titans. It was a winning in situation. And the Jaguars, they went out there. They won it. Second-year quarterback Trevor Lawrence, he looked good. Doug Peterson in his first year brings the Jaguars to the playoffs. Good for them. They're going to be a tough team to play. They're young, but they could be a really tough out in the playoffs. That set up the AFC playoff picture. And looking at the NFC playoff picture, the Seahawks were the team that was able to grab that last spot. They won against the Rams. And because they won against the Rams... They still needed a little bit of extra help. They needed the Lions to beat the Packers on Sunday Night Football, which is exactly what happened. The Seahawks ended up in a bit of a nail-biter with the Rams, but at the end of the day, again, a win is a win. And going into that Sunday Night game, the game ended up being meaningless for the Lions. Packers had a lot to lose. Lions went out there, they played hard, and they won the football game. And at the end of the game, Packers now eliminated from the playoffs. A couple Lions players actually asked Rodgers for his jersey, and he declined. He said he wanted to keep this one, which again... Now has the rumors swirling about, could this be it for Aaron Rodgers? He's going to go down as one of the greatest of all time if he decides to hang it up now. It would be tough to see him walk away on a non-playoff season. But again, you know, he's an older quarterback. Uh, He's clearly talked about retiring before, so this might actually be it for him. So the playoff spots, they're set, set up for Super Wild Card Weekend. And looking at the bottom teams in the league, What the storyline is for them is who ends up getting that number one pick. The two worst teams coming into the weekend were the Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears. The Houston Texans, they win a nail-biter game against the Colts. The Bears got absolutely blown out, which means that the Chicago Bears end up getting the number one pick in the draft. The Houston Texans are going to be drafting at number two come April, which gives the Bears a massive advantage. They already have Justin Fields as their quarterback, so... They could really do quite the turnaround in just one offseason if they play their cards right with having that number one pick. Some additional storylines too with these bottom teams. Some head coaches have been fired. Five head coaches are out so far this season. Their names being Cliff Kingsbury, the Arizona Cardinals, Lovey Smith of the Houston Texans, Nathaniel Hackett of 
the Denver Broncos, Frank Wright of the Indianapolis Colts, and Matt Rule, Carolina Panthers. These five coaches are out. There could be a couple more coaches that are going to get fired. Ron Rivera, the Commanders, and Josh McDaniel, the Raiders. Those guys are on the hot seat this next week. They might get fired. We'll see how it goes. But currently, five head coaching vacancies. It'll be interesting to see how they fill them. It seems like guys like, watch out for these names, D'Amico Ryans, Jonathan Gannon, Shane Steichen. Those are kind of the hottest names on the head coach market. Also, Raheem Morris of the Rams. He's another guy that's getting interviewed too. So it'll be interesting to see who ends up getting hired and which of those guys ends up being successful in the next year. Now looking ahead to Super Wild Card Weekend, the Saturday slate is going to be the Seahawks and the Niners, a division matchup. Anybody can win that one. Despite the fact that the Niners are heavily favored, anybody can win those division games because these opponents end up being so familiar with each other. The second Saturday slate game is going to be the Chargers and the Jaguars. That's going to end up being a really good game. Two young teams haven't been in the playoffs in a little bit of time. It's going to be a great game there. That's the night game. And then looking at the Sunday slate, it's going to be the Giants and Vikings in that first game. That's a rematch of a game just a couple weeks ago where the Vikings were able to win it on a long field goal. An impressive win. And honestly, though, for this coming week, for this Super Wild Card weekend, the Giants are a popular upset pick. A lot of people are picking the Giants to potentially win that one over the Vikings, despite the fact that the Vikings are for sure going to go into that one favored. And then the next two games, two more divisional matchups, Dolphins and Bills, Ravens, Bengals. Again, division matchups, anybody can win it. I don't even care who's favored because these teams, they end up being familiar with each other and their records almost don't matter. Finally, final game of the weekend is going to be the Cowboys and Buccaneers, a rematch of all the way back in week one where the Buccaneers won it. These teams are completely different than they were back then. It'll be a great game. Cowboys clearly on paper the better team, but you can never count out Tom Brady. I'm really excited for the weekend. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. I'll be watching every single game in its entirety. I hope you guys will too out there. This was Sean McCaffrey with the Weekly Wrap-Up. Thanks for listening.